This lesson's topic is deep science fiction. Science fiction that goes a little bit further than your standard science fiction, beyond a certain moment. And uh, the film in our main topic is going to be Dune uh, from 1984, directed by uh, David Lynch, although he tried really hard to get his name removed from it. Um, it was based on a series of novels by Frank Herbert. The first book is called Dune, and then they call it the Dune series. Um, this was the most expensive film of its time. It was a complete financial disaster. Uh, nobody really went to see it. Nobody who saw it really liked it. And uh, they made toys that didn't sell, although they're worth a bucket load now. So if you can get, get, a, get your hands on the toys, you could uh, make uh, quite a packet. Now, there are actually six Dune novels. Uh, four primary ones and two other ones. I'm a total nerd, so I, I think I've read it like three times, so bear with me. Um, and the film has to take quite a few liberties in order to get all of that in it, or at least to get, get some sort of resolution, because in the novel Dune, um, it doesn't end any place that, you know, where you have big explosions and everybody's happy at the end. It's just kind of a transition to, to the next part. So they had to make a more satisfying ending, so that was definitely a, a change that had to happen. And they had to squeeze all of that, and it's a pretty long book, into a two-hour package. Um, that never really bodes well. Supposedly there's a four-hour cut of it somewhere. Um, there's a made-for-TV version, but it's, it's a mess. They even have some scenes that run through twice. So this version is probably the most uh, satisfying one. Um, now, some of the changes they made to make it fit into that package work. Um, there's definitely some David Lynch things, that, um, especially the actors he uses, and then some of the, the little uh, visual twists that he adds. Uh, definitely very Lynchian, and that's kind of cool. Um, but there's others that are really crummy, really cringeworthy. So at the end of it, Mwadib sum summons rain from the sky. And although he does have some you know, particular powers beyond the normal uh, normal guy, uh, summoning rain from the sky is not one of them. Uh, there's also a really annoying voiceover which runs through it, um, and some other things. Um, the re main reason I want to have you watch this film, even though it is you know, kind of a disaster, it is amusing in a lot of ways, I will admit that. It is kind of informative, though. Um, and it's the fact that it is what I, what, I, what I call deep science fiction. And there's not a lot of science fiction films or groups of films that really um, fit into that. One of the reasons is because most of the issues that it deals with, um, religion, commerce, ecology, psychology, technology. So it deals with a lot of uh, theologies, a lot of sciences and a lot of social issues as well. And it does so in a manner that fits with the science fiction genre, um, and it also draws really strong parallels to our own issues here and now. I'm not going to let the cat, cat out of the bag. I want you to watch the clips and then try to imagine you know, the parallels that you know, Dune has to our own world and some of the resources in it. It should be relatively obvious. Um, and this was written in 1965, um, well before a lot of the issues we have today really started. So um, kind of interesting that uh, Frank Herbert was able to kind of look at this uh, earthbound issue, you know, create something new, something uh, science fiction out of it, and kind of forecast what was going to happen, because uh, it's definitely a very prescient, um, which is actually, a, uh, prescience is definitely an, an issue within the film. So uh, try to enjoy it, watch the whole thing if you want, and watch just the clips that should help you uh, at least answer the questions.